Hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Art Whisperer 88. And on your screen, you see my large format jelly plate, uh, 16 by 20 inches. And um, it's back in service. And I wanted to uh, make sure that the paper would land in the same place and that's why I placed these uh, little styrofoam tabs so my paper will allow the image to be in the same place. Now here's one um, note about a jelly plate, especially when it's this large uh, I've had this for almost a year and the nature of this substance, it's very flexible and it kind of doesn't keep its shape too well after it ages. Um, yeah, I'll show you the, the edge of this ruler and the actual edge of the plate. And that is the nature of the flexible quality of the plate. So I just have to uh, warn you that don't be upset when you see that your plate after a while is starting to lose its shape um, because it's, it's very flexible. And the reason why it's effective in transferring ink and paint is because of its flexible nature. So I, I was a little upset at first, but I'm not going to let it bother me. Um, that's just the nature of using a um, gel plate. So anyway, uh, let me go ahead and prime this. I'm using uh, folk art plaid sunny yellow and I'm just going to prime the plate with this yellow paint and uh, just make sure that the surface accepts the paint because I haven't used this for a while and I can tell from the way the roller is moving that the surface of the plate is not perfectly flat you will have some dips and and bulges and uh, like I said, that's the nature of the flexible material. Uh, it, it's not going to behave like a sheet of plexiglass, which is very hard. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind when you use a plate this large. Uh, you have to be a little more forgiving Okay, as usual, I'm going to do my lines and marks. So this is the first coat. And I'm going to... Now my plan here is to create a whole series of backgrounds in light yellow and work my way towards the darker colors uh, which you will see later in the video. 
but at this point the important thing is to get the plate going again after being stored for a while. Okay, this. It's very sticky. It's putting up a fight. It's kind of like double stick tape but that's a good sign it means that it's transferring pigment so I have to be very careful when I pull this out so here's my first pull and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult to get this perfectly straight because it's, it's a flexible plate. But uh, do the best I can. Okay, so uh, I will let this dry for a few minutes. And then I will be right back and continue printing. So don't go away. Okay, I'm back after a short break. I'm going to load the plate once more and charge it with this light yellow. Now this light yellow is very watery because I did that on purpose. I wanted to uh, finish the bottle and get every trace of it. And that's why it's good to have um, rag to do cleanup. Again, I'm putting some lines here. Now, um, going to introduce some raw sienna just for contrast. Then I uh, will use my wooden dowel, create some, some lines for just to make some interesting marks.
Let's see what we got. I can see there's a lot more interest because of the texture. It's a close up. I, I am very happy with the result. Okay, I'm putting this aside to dry. Now this is the the first print. I'm going to uh, Add more of the yellow ochre. And see what result I can get. Now, since this is the second layer of color, I'm uh, creating some open spaces so the bottom layer is going to show through. And uh, like I had mentioned before, this method of printing, there's a lot of element of surprise. Um, even if you do plan a rough layout, you rarely ever know what kind of result you're going to get. And I think that's worth the fun of printing is you can see the uh, texture of the paint created by the plate. Here we go. And here's a close up. And it definitely is more interesting than the first pull, which is very plain. So uh, I'm quite pleased with the result. This would make a very interesting background for more marks and more collage on top. So again, I'm going to set this aside to dry. So this time I'm going to use, instead of using the light yellow, I will use the raw sienna. By the way, this is Blickrylic, and this is a uh, student grade 
paint. It's uh, reasonably priced because it's meant for arts, art students. And it's an ideal paint to use for gel printing. Um, you don't have to worry too much that uh, it's an expensive medium to use. Since it's student grade, it's very reasonably priced. This one is a bit drier than the other two, but that's okay. Okay, this is more like a wood cut. Here's an close up okay so I can later I can easily work on the edges and apply some more layers or some more collage so uh, that's it for the first pull for these three pieces and I'll let this dry for a few minutes and then I will be right back. <laughs> 